Hey everybody, thank you for joining me here. Um, I want to talk about the best time to sell a property in the Twin Cities, and I hope that you find this information helpful. If you want to just read about this and you're not much of a video person, go to my website at iheartminneapolismplshomes.com and you can download my free um, smart seller book or guide. Um, this is the hard copy, of course, that I give people when I meet them. However, you can get that information as a PDF right now if it's interesting to you. Um, there is a chapter in here that I think is really important to talk about and obviously why you clicked on the video, which is a whole section on timing the market and you can see here in these pictures of a winter versus springtime and I think the first thing that's important for you to know is that there's a lot of factors that go in and just because a real estate agent says you know here's what we know is true or generally true um, you know there's always caveats like we can't predict the future so um, I think about things that have deeply impacted us in the last couple of years the pandemic uh, wars and interest rates, things that are outside of our control. And these things we've learned can flip on a dime. So everything's trucking along and boom, this thing happens. And all of a sudden, if people are feeling um, like the things that have been happening lately, very insecure, very uncomfortable with where things stand, they're gonna slow down and pause and stop thinking about moving when the world feels uncomfortable and, and out of control. So, so we have to be careful when we talk about timing because these unpredictable components like if we're planning and planning around things and then there's things out of our control we just need to be mindful of that so let's just talk about basics we're in minnesota and this is a four season state there's no denying that and it's not uncommon for people to say i don't want to move in the winter but we need to step back and say people do move all year round Real estate agents aren't seasonal careers, and that's not an exception because we're in Minnesota. So two of the slower times of the year that you should be mindful of is late summer and winter. And the spring market doesn't start when it gets green outside. In fact, we have a saying at Bricks, which is we don't, we don't want to wait for it to get green to make green. Meaning if you're waiting all the way until May, which is really when it greens up often in Minnesota, again, that's variable too. Um, you might have been actually a little late to the party. I know that just doesn't like, I think before I was an agent or just thinking, you know, it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but real estate isn't like a, a quick process, right? So for sellers, there's often months of preparation and same with buyers. Buyers um, that are really doing this in a serious way, they don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm gonna move and I'm gonna buy a house. They have a process of going through as well before they're going to choose a house. And then when they do, when they write an offer and they accept it, it still often is a 30 to 60 day process. So we have to move backwards from that. And so really the spring market starts in January. And I know, I don't know why we call it that because there's nothing springy about January. In fact, it's normally one of the coldest months of our year. So it's, it's very contradictory to our gut instinct. But if we look at the data, which I could easily pull up, you're going to see sales pick up after the holidays. So as you're thinking about the best, best time to maximize the dollar, generally the best historical time has been the last few weeks of um, March and into April. And so if you can get your house ready and listed before then, that will be your maximum time to get the most buyers into your house. But we haven't gotten to the next point, which is like what's important to you. So just kind of put a pause in that. That's just giving you, you know, hard data. So another thing that you want to think about is the day of the week, but also where are the holidays falling? Generally speaking, there's a major holiday every month. Not not quite, but that's if you look at a calendar, there's normally something that's happening. And some of those holidays are more significant than others in Minnesota. And so it's not great timing, uh, like I'm, I'm filming this in September of 2023. I had a listing. We very much had a very deliberate conversation. Not only were we picking a Thursday because we know that that historically is the best day of the week, 
we also chose not to go on the market a week before Labor Day and we waited until the week after. And while I wasn't even excited about that week as much as I would be another week, it was still better than listing it on Labor Day. If I list it that Thursday and nobody's in town and nobody sees it, I I don't mean to be like fatalist, but like why waste those important days on market? Um, now it's going into the second weekend before I'm getting eyeballs on this house. It'd be a better strategy to maybe put it in a coming soon status during that time so people that are serious home shoppers know it's coming on the market even if it's not quite available yet for showings, then my seller isn't being affected negatively by getting, again, days on market that's counting against them. Um, so these are just some little strategies to help you as you're trying to pick the rest, the best time. Another consideration is the weather. So while we may have good intentions that we're gonna list this month and this day, if let's say a major snowstorm is going to blow through our city, it's best to pause and again pick another day because if nobody's gonna come on that day again why should i waste a day and i, I it's such a weird thing to say but if the major snowstorm is on a thursday why not wait for it to clear out and i'd rather list it that saturday or wait until the following week then just put it on the market because that was our plan and I am just set on that. You have the pictures, again, you could go with the coming soon strategy rather than list it that day. When we talk about days of the week, we know that when you list Wednesday through Friday, you're going to get 40% more showing activity than Saturday through Tuesday. I wanted to make sure I was saying it correctly. So the day of the week does matter. In fact, I think that it matters a little bit more than people tend to give it credit. I think sometimes people are picking other reasons to list a house, but using what we know statistically is true, which is a Wednesday through fr Friday is a better day to list a house than the others. That may sometimes overpower maybe even the month you're picking in some, um, some levels. So a home seller priority list I have for you is something that I can share with you um, really at any point, but it might be more valuable if you were actually my client. But let me give you a few tidbits. There's other things we need to consider when we're picking timing. It's listing your priorities. And so if getting the top dollar is the most important, then maybe taking a what I said to you about listing in March and April, you should really take to heart if that maximum dollar, that very quick sale is super important to you, then um, that might be something you wanna follow through with. However, there's other priorities that people have um, as simple, like if I'm being very simplistic, most of us are looking for a quick sale and the most amount of money, but I do think that there's other priorities that come into play. For example, one of the things might be how much prep work is there to do. So it might not matter that I want a March sale. If I'm making a decision to sell my house in February and there's no way I can get it on the market by March, April, that's fine. I mean, it might be more important to prep the house and make it look um, a certain way rather than worry about like, okay, I'm gonna push it out in March, but like I still have 50 projects that should have been done to maximize the dollar. So it's like balancing those things, of course. Season, um, in terms of that conversation, it could be what I was just sharing with you or there could be seasonality, things that are important to you. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of people that don't wanna move in winter. I mean, it's a very common thing for people to say, even when they have a moving company and a moving truck, they're like, I am not moving in winter. Well, then we need to honor that. And so despite my recommendation about the spring, you may say, no, there's still snow on the ground or there still might be snowstorms. I'm absolutely going to wait until summer. The other thing I think about is kids. A lot of us that are parents, um, see the little one behind me, we're not pulling our kid out of school mid-year. We might want to wait until the whole year is done. And again, if that is your goal, which I'm sure I'm speaking to a lot of people on that topic, do not wait until June to list it. You want a backwards plan so you're closing in June. Uh, which may be to your benefit in terms of getting the top dollar. So I'm gonna conclude there uh, because I've given you a lot of tips and things to think about and I'm not here to overwhelm anybody. Again, my book is available if you would like to download it for free. 
Um, if, if you found me on YouTube, I'd love for you to subscribe, follow, like, comment. It'd be great to hear from you. I am a Twin Cities real estate agent. Thank, thank you so much for joining me. I'd love to see you on iheartmplshomes.com. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you move things along and find your next house. Take care.